Hello there everyone and welcome to episode 2 of us playing as Reich's Commissar at Ukraine, but really, the Communist Ukraine. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, but we gotta ensure forced regularity. It is one thing to fight a partisan war, it's another to wage war on a scale needed to liberate Ukraine. Our time to transition to such a type of warfare is drawing short, and we must acknowledge that our current partisan units are insufficient. Our brave men and women must now transition from guerrillas into hardened soldiers, capable of matching the Wehrmacht diminished as it is under the Reich's Commissariat. There comes a time that partisans must become soldiers and guerrillas a true military, this time is rapidly approaching. Such a significant transition will require strict oversight by high command, and strong leadership from the general staff. There's no more time to waste, it's time for the Red Army to rise once more, and death of hope. And a little house on the outskirts of the village near Donetsk. The old red partisan was writing a letter. He knew that his hour was coming, that death was at his doorstep. So he decided to spend the very last days of his life writing a message to his family. He stopped writing for a couple moments before finally resuming. For most of my entire life, I fought against the oppression of the working class, against the invaders, tyrants, enemies of the common people. First, it was the Tsar and the Whites. Then the kind of revolutionaries, and in the end, the Germans, however. All of my efforts, as those of thousands and thousands of others, went in vain. Ukraine lies in ruins, and there's no one to clean them up and rebuild a country to go to the glorious days of the past, to the days of the Union. The young generation, though continuing the fight for the sacred ideals that our nation once stood for, uh, may, among many other brotherly nations, is untested and idealistic. They're doomed to fail and fall. They don't stand a chance in the face of the German occupier, so I ask, beg you while it's not late, flee Ukraine. There's no hope of ever breaking our chains. I can sense war coming. The great war we've not seen since the 40s, and while we still have our fragile peace, you should run away from this place, run away to Turkey. It's not that far away from here. And further, and further abroad, Ukraine may be lost, but not the world. I wish you good luck, wherever you may be, and remember that I love you. Yours, Dmitro Ambrosiv. Out of the partisan finish of letter, he felt relief. The only thing he still had to do was done. He may not rest peacefully, he went to sleep and never woke up, thus ended a story of a struggle only with his uh, dog as his witness. Farewell. But, hey, yeah, we well, might be able to build some hospitals, maybe. Depending if we want them or not. Um, so, all this stuff is done for now. Engineering would be nice, but we're actually done with engineering for now, too. But we're going to build some radar stations because. We can. Um, right now, we're looking pretty good. That's 37% control for us in Reichenaustadt, but... Ooh, we can target collaborators? No, we can assault strongholds. 8% more control on Reichen... Reichenaustadt. And we have this, 67%. 85%. We almost have three areas under our complete control, which is fantastic. Oh, and the beginning of the combined arms. The professionalization of our forces continues to pace, and great progress has been made in all areas but one, combined arms warfare. The reasons are numerous, all ultimately stemming from the subpar conditions we find ourselves in. However, the fact remains that this knowledge and training is fundamental to winning a modern war. The Wehrmacht will not hesitate to use every advantage against us, and one clear advantage they possess is knowledge of this doctrine of war. Fortunately, there exists a solution, albeit a difficult one. In Kazakhstan, there exists military academies, with exiles who can teach these strategies. We'll send our best officers and men there so they can employ every tank, aircraft, and artillery piece to their maximum potential. That would be fantastic. And how much longer do we have to wait? Not too much longer. Oof, oof. Not bad. So good. 40%. I love it. End our absence. I think I read last time, but... The West Russian War resulted in the decimation of our, most of our influence in Ukraine, with only the eastern regions and those bordering Odessa fe remaining feasible for operations, while this tre treat was necessary. It resulted in difficulties, including a strained relationship with the existing Russian minority, and called into question our claim to Ukraine itself. Yet, even after two decades of propaganda against us, we retain sympathizers across Ukraine, even in the West. These sympathies are strongest in Zyatomir, Venetia, Volin, and Maxim Konachuk. The regional partisan commander is confident that this support can be turned into manpower when this time comes. He is confident the force can be raised men will once more rally to the banner of the Socialist Republic, as we're going to save just in case, just because, uh, want to make sure we do well here. Alright, so let's see. What can we do? Not bad. Oh, not good enough yet. Ugh. Disgusting. It didn't even fire. Oh, the storm's calm. I want to make sure that whatever we spend our political power on, it is actually worthwhile to us, so... A three-decade tragedy. The Ukrainian insurgent army is a force which some might see as an ally in our struggle for Ukrainian liberation, yet their actions show the danger they pose to us and any true friend of Ukraine. From their inherently hateful ideology to the total slaughter of Jews to the tragedies in Volyn and Eastern Galicia, the little more than a hateful band of raiders masquerading as freedom fighters, and we're hardly the only ones to see the results of the brutality. The peasantry in Volyn and Galicia who supported them have seen their support begin to wane as a result of UPA's methods. When these regions were occupied by Poland, these same peasants were strong supporters of the Communist Party. With uh, support to the UPA fading, perhaps they can uh, join us again. A storm's calm. 
Petro Lashenko ran to hand over the chipped concrete. It had been a bunker once before the German demolition charges had shattered its walls and killed its occupants. He'd been young then, a fresh faced graduate from Fruns, class of 1940, right on time to fight the fascist invasion. He hadn't stopped since. He met the eyes of his counterparts, Kutsenko, Maxim, and a handful of other ju their junior, and nodded in a greeting. It made him feel old. Last time, the senior political leadership of the Ukrainian SSR met personally with, a hand with its heads of its armed services. During the prelude to the West Russian War, things hadn't gone precisely to plan. Lashenko had gotten lucky, many of his comrades had him, and superstition was hard to shake. Prayer, I suppose, had its occasional use. Comrade Secretary Shumsky began, his voice filling the room. I apologize for summoning you here on such short notice, and not waste your valuable time on platitudes. We all know what's at stake, and we all know what we've lost. The man seemed as lively as ever, despite his age. The fascists are weakening, disorganized. We've grown stronger, our stores are full, our men motivated and ready. He looked at each of them. Comrade, this is the best opportunity we have. Maybe the only opportunity we might have. We cannot waste it. For the sake of our children, for the sake of the revolution, for the sake of all those we lost. That day will come soon, comrades, very soon. An early handed out folder. We'll be open upon the return. Return your men, spread the news, and may luck be with us all. They left with the determination in their faces and iron in their hearts. A three decade tragedy, which I just read. And four decade farce. Perhaps the greatest mistake made during our liberation of the Western lands was the belief that we could trust the UNDO, bourgeois Ukrainians who once ruled Galicia. A mistake we came to regret when they betrayed the Socialist Council Republic. The treason left them helpless to stop the Germans afterwards, but remain, remnants remain in the form of the UNRA. This group is a deceptive, malicious gang of Polish collaborators who dare to champion ch Ukrainian fr uh, freedom. Their understanding of liberty would entail only the exploitation of this Ukrainian worker by, its own, by one of his own. They are incompatible with their own vision, but unlike the UPA, they command some genuine loyalty from both peasants and bourgeoisie. In fact, that will make them dislodging them even more difficult than the UPA. And we're back. And like normal, we're going to save just because I want to see how much influence we can get across the region. Alright, so... Fantastic. Nearly perfectly occupied. Can we just like fully occupy it? 58%. Because this one does what? 30%? Let me do it one more time here. So we have three areas under our control. That is amazing. Just fantastic. Discredit the clauses or causes. Demonstrate their impotence. We'll go with on the outside one. Both the UPA and UNRA offer promises and visions of a Ukraine free from German or Russian domination. As a respectable goal, which, which one would you share? Yet the hard truth is that neither can achieve it. The well, ex-commissar's forces are considerable, despite their separation from Germany. To defeat them will be no easy task, and one only we are equipped to handle. While they only have collaborators, scattered, inexperienced partisans, led by old, fading generals from the era of the People's Republic, our forces are prepared for decades for this moment. While well, the influence ends at the borders of Venezia and Zetomir, we, we have widespread support throughout the country. Our new truly wishes the Ukraine's commissary Ukraine fall, and of course Ukraine to be free. We are, we are their only option, of course. Tap the pipeline. I'll contact the remnants first. It would be a mistake to say that the Ukrainians enjoyed uh, perfect relationships with members of the Union over the per course of our existence, with Russia, of course, in particular. At the same time, there exists an unbreakable bond between the communists of Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. Today, our military officers are training academies in Kazakhstan. We share equipment with Muscovy and partisan groups. We disseminate knowledge, tactics, and strategies with Belarusian partisans. We support our comrades the best as we can, just as they support us. All for the cause, all for freedom. Now our hour struggle draws close. Now we live, die, and face the future together. We did so then, and we're going to do so now as well. Fantastic. Making sure the revolution burns extremely bright. We have 7% there, huh? Hmm. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, it's got takes a lot of manpower, doesn't it? This one, this is a guaranteed eight. I'm not sure I've done that one for this one, but whatever. Um, I don't mind just waiting to just get guaranteed plus eight. That'd be fantastic. A full nice ten percent.
And we'll contact the remnants. I want to discredit their classes or demonstrate their importance. Tap the pipeline. It's widely known that a smuggling empire exists within the borders of the Reich's eastern territories. One of the large smuggling pipelines that once flows through Ukraine into Muscovy, where thousands of illegal weapons are sold on the black market to partisans, criminals, and the common corrupt German official. As the days of the revolution approaches, we find ourselves in a deficit of weaponry. To alleviate this issue, we'll routinely uh, ambush convoys using the pipeline, seizing massive caches of weapons to fuel our own war effort. Or why would we not? Good target collaborators. Ooh. That's only 7%, but whatever. Need more command power, definitely. Lowered it by a little bit. Raised deficit. Got rid of as much damage from the deficit a little bit, but still. Not good enough. Red basket actions are available, huh? Oh, I guess we can still do this. Forgot about all this stuff. Well. Cost command power too, which is why I've kind of ignored it. So that, that did nothing that time. That's three percent. Oh, look at that. Now we're twelve percent here. Can we save up for another few more days to get this one? It's twenty-five. That's a lot. It's only three. Hmm. Assemble the uprising. The time is fast approaching. The continuing disintegration of the occupation state is clear to all. And when speaking of a revolution, the only talk is of when, not if. We must make the final preparations in order to be ready for that time. The militias will be called up, assembled, armed, and moved to the prepared attack points. Ordinarily, the Germans will intercept and destroy them, but they are too far busy, far too busy to do that now. Far too distracted. That is most excellent, of course, indeed. I want that 25 command power. That'd be nice. Happy September, everybody. Well, maybe at this point we're just going to focus on the states that we do have. Because I just don't think we'll be able to take Kiev. Don't get me wrong, it'd be nice, but... Tap the pipelines. Hope it doesn't cost too much command power. Let's take a look see. Oh, it doesn't. Change your weapon stockpiles. Be able to use take advantage of extra infantry equipment at the start of the oh, right. Um, I mean, that's worth it. Extra infantry equipment. I like that. Eventually, in 1918, once more, the wheels of history turn and groan as we make ready to achieve our destiny. As the uh, Ukapasts, Borodbist, and the Ukrainian Bolsheviks did in 1918, we now extend ready to overthrow and expel a German supported reactionary regime while Berlin is engulfed in turmoil. What's our chances here? And when we have succeeded, and as we succeeded then, we shall succeed now. There's no doubt that the forces aligned with us are considerable, but our forces are prepared. The Communist Party is united, and our resolve is steadfast, for we have something no others have. <coughs> Excuse me, the Ukrainian people stand at our side, and together we march to seize their liberation. The die is cast, and history will soon sway say if we have done enough. Death to the German invaders, long live Ukraine. The eve of war. That seems like fun. Them Nazi strongholds. Nice, we have absolutely full control. Two thirds of it are under us. Fantastic. We're only 10% here, but I'm not concerned. Nice. Threshold's gone. getting lower and lower, it looks like. It's fine with us. That's when soon to determine who's right. Hugensdorf. Oh, wait. Hugensdorf. Whoops. I should have done that in Hugensdorf. Trump or self? Tales of old glory. Eh, whatever. Who cares? So, what is this one? More control. Our forces shall each receive additional experience at the start of, uh, of that part of every time we take this. Oh. I'm okay with that. More experience. 
Sounds good to me. I mean, obviously we don't spend that much political power here, which is good too, but still. We got another 20 days for this one, so. Which probably won't even happen when we hit the Civil War, but whatever. Kept Haitian Proclamation. Good for them. Hey, Barbara's not too good. What else is new? Rojas disposed. Well, it's killing itself. But what else is new? Wow, look at all those demilitarized zones. Doesn't make sense. Interior of Africa, who's really looking at that right now? You know? There you go. Oh, there goes Hitler. Goodbye, Hitler. Darn it, did nothing. Oh, we lost, we lost it. The Korean National Revolutionary Republic got a little more strength there, dang it. Well, you can't win them all every time. Oh, and Germany's exploding. Yay! Now they like a good old German explosion to make things more interesting, right? <sighs> the evil war. In the basement of an unassuming apartment building in eastern Ukraine, Andrei Ruchitsitsky sets by a bank of telephones and drums his finger on the uh, desk. One knee bounces up and down, heel clacking slightly on the concrete floor. The room is full of people, but there's no sound except for the occasional click of a lighter. As of yet, another cigarette sparks up. As the room slowly fills with smoke, Ruchititsky's hands unconsciously clenches and unclenches. A single drop of sweat trickles down his brow, and a heavily guarded bunk of Roman Rozdoyevsky and Veselovlad Holubnichi held sits helpless. They are civilian intellectuals, not warriors. The great gamble will have to succeed or fail without them. Holubnichi. Paces around the room clockwise as he's been doing for hours. Rozdowski stares at his lap and wipes his glasses with a scrap of paper in a crowded office behind a commercial garage in Kharkiv. Mykola Zubatenko bellows at his subordinates and sends men scaring for cover with the fighting about to begin. Secrecy is paramount. All sales are on lockdown and NKVS is stretching itself to the breaking point to ensure that no information gets out to the unsuspecting German garrison. Red-faced and exhausted, Zubatenko drains a shot of vodka to strengthen his spirit. Alexander Shumsky sits and smokes a cigarette. His hands are still and his posture relaxed, but his hazy thousand-yard stare betrays his true feelings. It is all coming down to this. One last chance, a free Ukraine or the total destruction. It's about to begin. Tears of all glory. Corporal Schultz watched as the three men from atop the stump. Their shadows flickered on the canopies of the tall trees as their meager campfire sparked. The grounds were wet with the evening mist. Drowning what little heat the pile of twigs could produce, but the three men hardly seemed to mind. They had seen nights such much darker and colder than this when the first man was recounting yet another tale in a bellowing voice that would have gotten him shot even a kilometer closer to the towns. Then you remember how we were hiding in that cellar, the one with all the carrot marmalade the farmers were hiding away? Well, of course, I can never forget Anna and her delicious marmalade with that light hint of cinnamon. Though, as I always say, the one is often tastier than her cooking, and with Anna, I couldn't have been proven more right, said the second man with a hearty laugh. Please, Karma, we both know she never got to meet her near you with those crap-stained red army rags of yours. I cannot say the same for myself, of course. Hold up on the tiny cellar. Your butt was so close to my face, I could probably taste a week's worth of your su supper, said the third. Ah, but I bet even our friend's hindquarters were almost certainly tastier than your cooking, replied the second. You're too harsh, comrade. Even a fine chef like myself cannot make a meal out of what those these crowds call rations, snapped the third man as he tossed his pink sausage at Corporal Schultz's pallid cheek before it bounced off with a slick slop. Cut that out or you'll dirty up his face, scored the first. We want his friends to admire every ounce of that Aryan beauty when they see his head pinned to a tree. Here are the Union, and an approaching storm. There was stillness in the campsite. The kind of stillness that precedes the storm. Soldiers ate the rations in silence, patrols moved quietly through the forest brush. Lumida, Ludmilla... Pavlichenko cleaned her rifle, delicately removing and polishing each part and reassembling it. Not much longer now, she thought. She looked at her arm. There's a deep indent where a bullet had entered her arm and a spiderweb like mass of tissue that spiraled out from it. Once she flexed her muscles, there was no longer pain, only the ghost of a feeling. She continued to stare at her arm curiously and wondered how long it had been like that. She could remember as if it were yesterday. When her arm had been rendered mangled and useless by the Hitlerites, she remembered fleeing through the forest of Donetsk, consumed by pain and fear. She remembered the painful treatments and stinking ba stained bandages. Now she felt none of that. She tried to move her fingers and they responded as she balled her hand into a fist. There was no more fear. There was no more pain. She felt no anxiety. There was simply the mission ahead of her. She and her comrades would liberate the cities of Ukraine. They would sweep from Rostov to Lviv, 
eliminating the fascist invaders wherever they were, ripping and tearing the colonizers from the earth. They would root out the vultures and then, at long last, achieve true, genuine freedom. From somewhere far behind, a soldier began to stir up from the stillness. It was time before, the storm was upon them. A thunder boots precedes a lightning of battle. Pavlichenko will lead the liberation of Ukraine and all of Ukrainians. She will see her people free or die trying. Let us kaboom. We're gonna kaboom sometime here. Not sure when, but sometime. Franco Burgundian War, very nice. Happy November, everybody. Hey, some up poverty actually got a little better. Go figure. There goes Austin. On Spado doing his thing. Extension to Africa, Poland's falling apart, and then we're probably next. Complication deny. The simple solution was simple, obvious, evident, and yet it clearly a decision was not to be made. No response was coming. Uh, oh, I've heard this one before, I think. What well, shall come with this? The breadbasket mechanic has been disabled to, to the German Civil War. If you want to read this, please go ahead. Ben is no more. The plan was finally in motion. The suits in Kiev. Much lesser masters in Germania didn't even know it. The USSR partisans, who had once assumed the moniker Bennis, thrust on them by the media and the government did what they always did, cutting telephone lines and harassing the moving parts of the occupier's machine. When the lights went out across Donbass, not a single official would bat an eye, even as they were being blindfolded and gagged in preparation for the revolution. The seas were settling in flames, left as rebels armed and unarmed, wrecking havoc among them in the caustic mixture of galvanized riots and paramilitary operations. Scrambled troops were overwhelmed by the sheer mass of people's anger, and those that fled found themselves in a countryside so hostile to their very existence that perhaps they would have been safer among the furious rioters than the well-armed bitter partisans. They didn't say more luck than the administrators of the various cities, who called and called to the men in Kiev to send help, but might as well have been screaming at a brick wall and their communications cut. Perhaps one or two slipped away into the fog of war, but the government would still be slow to act, even as Lugansk burned. Time passed and more and more information escaped the blackout and the brief cries for help. Finally, it would seem that Rock's Commissariat officials pulled their heads out of their sand once the violence began spilling out of Donbass and into the rest of Ukraine. They faced reality. These were no mere bandits and these were no mere raids. This was a revolution. Will they respond in time, though? Civil war is now inevitable. Four more sets become demilitarized zones. Please just give me a little bit more. Ah, disrupt infrastructure. Nice. Oh, well, that was fast. Ah, oh, Austin is really destroyed now. A ruthless calculation. The last still garrison is about to break. Oh. Uh, I think I've read this before. You gonna read this, please go ahead. Because this doesn't has nothing to do with our uh, communist party here. There are the Jews. Volinia ablaze. Uh, well, uh, you know what? If you're doing this one, please go right ahead if you'd like to read this one as well. This has nothing to do with us. So. Yeah, so now these guys are here. You guys have a screen? Great panic. Franz Meyerhofer, the Crimean clade, Doug behind the Nipper. The Western lines cut. If you're in this, please go ahead too. Can't wait to explode. Oh, Death has got better. Time's looking okay. Especially compared to what it was, once was. Oh. All alone? Nice. Burn has exploded too.
British Civil War, Rebirth. Uh, Pablo cleared his throat, muttering a handful of mnemonics to assure that he remembered the speech. He ran about it so naturally he should, but it was still rough. The crackled old walls were a faded beige, and the evening light struggled to push through the gloomy mist clinging to the windows. Rendering the room dull and gray, the room was quiet as it should have been a radio booth, but the energy was electric. The men around him grinned and quietly exchanged conversations, celebrating the victory while the rest were before the next. Uh, rushing for the next. One of them was just waiting beside him, fiddling with the radio. Is it working yet, Vasil? Asked Pablo, who was beginning to feel the chill of the old Lugansk building, not helped by the gunshot broken window through which a uh, draft escaped. Try and sir, muttered the younger man. We need to mess up the, their equipment good up. They must have the equipment good during the takeover. You can't fix that in a day. It's been there. It's been three yet. We're live. The bickering faded away in the face of pride and purpose as the memories of United Victory led Pablo through his next words. People of Ukraine, new heirs upon us. As many of you surely heard, control of Donbass, as well as the last few weeks, Kharkiv and Izium, has been lost by our occupiers. Communication has gone dark. Let there be no question now as to why they've been lost. The revolution has come, and the Ukrainian Socialist Soviet Republic has been reborn here in Donbass. We hereby declare the U.S.S.R. to be the legitimate and sole government of our homeland. The revolution will continue until the fascists and traitors are driven out as they have been from Donbass and Kharkiv. This message will repeat until taken down, or new information reserves its head. A glory to the revolution, recorded and repeated, the Thames now, the revolution has begun. Vindicate the Long March In spite of the Nazis' worst efforts to stamp out the Soviet Union, their heirs to the Bolshevik Revolution still survive. They have returned to see that their arch enemy now reaps the whirlwind. The defining adventure of the KPU, the Long March, was the crucible no same man should be forced to endure. Securing Eastern Ukraine from the Wehrmacht control, brutal and chaotic as it was, will forever stand as a testament to the now renowned Socialist Republic. The people of the Dnieper have finally stood up, revolting against decades of unforgiving subjugation. With Ukraine now collapsed into anarchy, we must act swiftly, be it sweet victory, bitter defeat. The forces of the KPU remain steadfast for what comes as the revolution is reignited once again. You are going to need anti tank. I guarantee you. Mm Led by Alexander Shumsky. Look at that guy. National communism. Fighter until the end. Elf well, unity by him is good head. Get political power, defense, and attack on core territory. Pity, weekly political power, trust. Lessons along March. Long March East. Ascendancy of the Shumskiets. Party of many stripes. The worker uh, Ukrainians and peasants' right army. God, attack and defense is really bad for us. And division organization is really bad too. The Ukrainians of war. And revolutionary inertia. Which means we gotta push hard and fast right now. And there goes Muscovine. Nice. So we should have more territory than this. Transnistria War. Ukrainian state is here. I think I'll deliver, deliver these areas too, huh? Um, deliver the downtrodden. There's not an inch of earth left in Ukraine where the atrocities of the Nazis are invisible to us. The road checkpoints, the weapons, plants, and the ever endless rows of barbed wire fences, the victims of the Third Reich's twisted dream in the breadbasket lay all around us, just desperate for any chance to unleash hell on the Germans for the crimes against the people. This moment's finally arrived, and the men of the KPU are more than happy to indulge your countrymen in vengeance. 
No longer will the iron grip of fascism dictate their lives, but the combined strength of the United Brotherly Community. The rumbling of a factory line shall roar across the plains, the cracks of a rifle sign, and the end of Prussian domination. Hero of the Union, liberation of Kharkiv. I was, it was after the last bomb fell, after the guns finally went silent, the people of Kharkiv emerged from their homes into a colony unmade. The city made the ruins of grand fascist edifices and broken monuments. Street vendors up their, set up their wares on pockmarked streets still bearing the names of dead and ignoble conquerors. Children play near a sagging and headless statue of Adolf Hitler downtown. Families sifted through the rubble for one, the ones they had lost. Ludmila Palavchenko walked through these scenes feeling a strange sense of peace. Yes, of course, many died in the battle. Yes, of course, there have been awful losses. The theater still been raised to the ground. Uh, streets remain littered with rubble. Still, there was hope here. From a sagging balcony high above her came the sound of voices. Long live the Union. Long live the free people of Ukraine. Scattered throughout the liberated city came other voices, making similar cheers even among the ruins. It was the sounds of the city waking up after fighting off a long illness, after a terrible injury. Ludmilla listened to these voices for a moment. She, sl or she slugged her rifle over her shoulder and her smiled. While much work remained ahead, each day alive was its own success. A free Ukraine regained its strength. Swing the clubs, pull the triggers. Even as the civil war was raging, the German settlers and the Ukraine still greedily cleaned the food supply of the breadbasket, the main beneficiaries of Nazi tyranny in the region. Stuffing so their bellies with, while the countrymen starved, grain ripped from our soil, worked by the people and watered it with tears. If there was even a single shred of sympathy in these Germans, they know our pressing need for food for our soldiers. If they have any reserves or reservations towards Germania for the treatment of our people, they will not interfere with the seizure of their stores. Tragically, uh, this is scarcely the sentiment felt by the settlers in the Nipper. Ensuring our food security must be taken precedence. Whatever contempt or sympathies either of us may have, we are all far too familiar with the Reich's methods of coercion, something the German civilians ought to pray we do not reciprocate. The Foreign Minister is royal. In the morning, I'm held by an old veteran slumped against a shed, the last days of his life sliding away in a stream of vodka. At noon, I'm found by a young child who brings me back home. I'm a chore, but I'm also the only fun to be found in a land without playgrounds where hide-and-seek is no longer a game in the evening. I'm critical in the hands of a mother. She denies herself a night of warmth and light so will not go hungry and gives me her last handkerchief to wipe my mouth. She hopes one day I will help her free from such want. At midnight, a father tucks me in with uh, my brothers. He assures us that someday we will leave her home and bring her light to the world. What am I? So, I don't understand. Their turn. We get this territory. We had this area under our control. We had more of this territory under our control. Was that all a waste? Was that all for naught? Like, what the heck? They got it surplus, which is nice. No growth. Ah. Honestly, we want to feed the soldiers. Grain consumption increased by five every 30 days. Because we're going to need that. Um, their turn. P.O.T. 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 Somewhere in the small hut near Rostov, uh, a previously silent radio came to the light to transmit one single word repeatedly. Partisans already knew the meaning of the word. In a matter of minutes, the soups on the table were eaten, and the people were already gone with the rifles and thoughts about the upcoming battles. The thoughts of all the horrors the Germans inflicted upon their land, and the desire for revenge burning inside them. They were about to liberate Ukraine. L-O-N-G. 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 Around a minute later, a similar situation occurred in a house on the outskirts of Donetsk. As the last minute prayers were finished and the comrades hugged each other, hoping that it wouldn't be the last time they do this, they picked up the weapons and went to the streets, prepared to face death, the occupiers and the dudes in gray uniforms. They were about to revenge the parents they were about to liberate Ukraine. H-E-R-T. 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 And Luhansk, another radio transmitted their message across the flat, with a partisan and his wife carefully listening to it. Despite all of the beloved one's protests, all must you really go, as the man knew he had to fulfill his destiny. As promised to his son, sleeping calm in the other room, he was about to leave his family behind for their own sake to bring back joy in their lives, to finally make the love of his life smile again. He was about to liberate Ukraine, and knock the Kolovili plan into the warehouses. Explode their enthusiasm. Michael uh, Kivlovi, those the power of that propaganda can have in rousing the spirits of our fellow countrymen, a tool the Germans themselves wield with begrudgingly good effectiveness. While well, the Reichs come aside and open collapse, and the Germans manufacture superiority over Ukrainians are irrevocably shattered, now is our turn to rally the nation to the banner of socialism once more. Every road worker, housewife, farm man, and office clerk from Kiev to the Black Sea will burn red with the fire of revolution. The international, the sacred war, the Polushka Polny will boom from the throats of every man, woman, and child in our great country, lift up your voices, and sing along with the soul of a million dead by German hands, all power to the Soviets. Crossing the Dnieper. The ground thundered beneath us, fighting continued almost all the way to Balevka. Where the Germans fought from the windows and from sandbags they propped up on the streets. Though we had superior numbers, most of us were armed with old Mosins or the German 98s, which were good for long distance but oversized at close quarters, and most of the bayonets had rusted away. 
I knew that if they intended to hold the village, they would have to set up snipers on the upper floors and fix machine guns in position. They defended step by step, retreating on a schedule drawing ever closer to the river. Experience dictated that, that when the Germans chose not to defend, they would destroy. The question was simply if we could cross before the bombs fell. I held a position behind a porch, well hidden behind rubble. Providing covering fire across the street, the Nipa roared ahead. We were so close to the river bridge that we could smell the spray. It was a broad, massive bridge, and there was every possibility that it had been rigged to explode underneath. We're marked with paint for the planes to target, and at any rate, bullets still flew just above our heads down the street. I waited for an opening, any opening. Then the hail of bullets stopped. My forward scouts finally returned, saying that both sides of the bridge would clear out on our head, and there was a time for a marching, but this was not it. I called out to the men in groups of three that ran across the bridge as fast as their legs could carry them. Finally, when they had all crossed, myself and my ammo carrier looked at once at each other and ran. In the distance, I could hear planes flying overhead and bullets on either on, on either side, but kept running. And the inner side of the river was devoid of enemies, and although I had orders to continue to secure the forward operating base, in that moment, my only regret was that I could not fight for my brothers that died and bled in that crossing that great river. For the personal memoirs of First Lieutenant Georgi Semenov, hero of the Union Liberation of Nepropetrovsk, uh, uh, the city, once a great the glory of Catherine, looked little like the model city it once been. Many blocks of the city center were marked with bullet holes. The bridge across the Nipper River had been demolished in an attempt to slow the advance of the Union's armies. Fields along the city fringes were waterlogged, apparently the result of some damage to the hydroelectric station some kilometers away. Still, the atmosphere in Nepropetrovsk was one of jubilation. After years of living in the shadows of watching fascist invaders steal their homes and their lands, the people of Ukraine were back on the streets cheering. God bless you, said a small babushka, pressing herself into Ludmila Pavlichenko's body. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the Soviet Union, said Ludmila gently. Bring yourself from the elderly woman's grasp. Soon all people will be free against the Hillerite. Glory to Ukraine, came the voice of a group of men slurring their speech and clearly intoxicated. Glory, glory, glory. Please, Ludmilla tried to make herself heard over the growing din. It was unusual for her, of all people, to be overpowered by this kind of response. We're here to fight for the cause of the Communist Party and the liberation of the workers against. It was useless. All that understood cheering crowds after a few futile attempts to incite a cheer for the Union, she shook her head and was departed. The invaders had done much damage to the cause, but the people would remember their liberators. Around it didn't fire. Both on Antonenko huddled around a small fire deep within the woods. There remains a small game he caught nearby as meal for the night. His concern was not on food, but instead what to do next. For now he hid as Ukraine collapsed into violence, stories and rumors of what was happening swirled in his mind. He heard of Ukrainians who had risen up, who had taken over half the country. He heard of partisans who supposedely assassinated the swaths of the Reich's commissariat apparatus. He even heard that more soldiers of the former Ukrainian Socialist Republic had emerged. He suspected most were exaggerated or untrue. The Germans would never let Ukraine fail so easily, not even if the wildest rumors were true. Yep, there was no doubt that the hold of the Germans was held was broken. Bodan watched the fire fading, fading fire, struggling what to do. His conscience told him to try and find his comrades among the communists, and what, the, what he'd done, they'd welcome him back as a hero. If he returned, he wouldn't be an aimless partisan, but have something higher to believe in. It seemed obvious at first, yet he hesitated as the fire dimmed and another cold Ukrainian night began. They were no longer the same since he'd almost killed Koch. He wasn't a special hero, and they didn't even know how he'd find them again since being cut off. He also knew they didn't fight now for a state of socialism. His mission, once so clear, was now anything but. Socialist, partisan, freedom fighter, none of those seemed right anymore. He knew he could not stay idle, but the fire that burned in him had dimmed. No cause fulfilling him as once it had. For now he decided he could only keep going. Maybe everything would become clearer in time. But we're not doing really well, as you see here. Uh, we lost 8,000, we killed off almost 30,000 of them. And even though we're not doing great in the north and the south, we're doing alright. Um, so we're pushing as hard and fast as we can. It's only December, but time is of the essence. We have to secure our bag as fast as possible. So, it is what it is. Up out, take, 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 take. That's all I want you to do is just take as much as you possibly can away from them. Because we don't want this modifier to uh, leave us. Because we'll lose the manpower, which is fine. Or army organization regains pretty good. Division speed is good. The attack and defense against this country is extremely important. God, are they pressing hard against us? It's not funny. But if they're not winning, not winning in most of these areas here, that means we can continue to push. What we get to. Thank you very much. Nice. I'm gonna have to play next. Yes. I hate that these guys. The Ukrainian state is not doing well at all. The Republic of Ukraine is doing nothing against the Reichs Commissariat, which is really bad for us. But happy January, everybody. Help oh, no. 
Good. Get up there. Good. Another division encircled and destroyed is exactly what we want and need. Can you break over the river? Red Revolution in Greece. Good. Nice. So now the south is not doing as well, but the north is doing pretty well. Strange how things work, huh? Keep going in. Just do not stop. I told you not to stop. On the road to Kiev. Fear, uh, fiery fury and passion surged through Peter van Norden as he drove to the Ukrainian countryside towards the city of Kiev. He gripped the steering wheel tightly, his knuckles wide, and seething with indignant rage. His focus was on the barbarians who were infesting the countryside, sabotaging, uh, stealing and killing incompetent Germans. No, it was a German officer who had come to his farm and had the audacity to order him to evacuate. It was too dangerous, he said. It was for his safety. He could have stayed. Peter knew that he could have remained and defended his sons from the bandits. Partisans and degenerates that were apparently too much for the Germans to handle, unfortunately. The German officer had resorted to ordering, to ordering him to leave. While furious, he knew better than to refuse a direct order. He glanced towards the back seat where his wife and son were seated and had fallen asleep. A sigh escaped him as he returned his focus on the road. Anatonia had insisted that they listen and leave when the family had learned how dangerous the partisans had become. She had been afraid for Marcus, forgetting that it was his job to protect the family. To just leave everything was... It didn't really matter anymore, now that they were on the road. He was afraid that he would return to a ruined home, stripped and eluded with no one to protect it. God knew the Germans certainly wouldn't. For now, all that the Van Nordens owned was in the back of this truck. For now, it would have to be enough. One day soon, they would return, of course. That wouldn't be bad. Increased grain stockpile, so the equipment will still increase. That's not bad, too. Getting another production here would be pretty good. Um... It's not bad either. Weekly stability? Are we losing weekly stability? Uh, that's pretty bad, yeah. Slaughtering each other here like crazy, are we not? Knack the plan, good. Empl empty the warehouses? Yeah. For all the insufferable bluster, the Nazis seem to care very little for the infrastructure upkeep of the colonial empire. Storehouses and workshops filled with German arms and equipment sit abandoned by the Wehrmacht, even as they scramble in desperation to hold on to the breadbasket. What have been the arsenal of the hatred to condemn us into, obl into oblivion now becomes a fulcrum for expulsion of the Third Reich from our native lands. Hey, oh, that's going to be so good. Thank God. Oh, so good to have those. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. From industrial base for war from sand, a patriarch fighting army from slaves. I like this more. Decrease weekly consumption grain by one. Increase grain stock by fifty. If you want to do something, do, do it soon. Huh. Well, exploit the enthusiasm. When well, our countrymen do not look back following the era of Bukharin, the advent of the German occupation has driven many young Ukrainians back into the arms of the KPU. Whether it's in the fields, in the factories, or in the army, the whole of our nation stands defined against the Prussian menace. Germany will look in fear as their old enemy crests the hills in the distance, young Ukrainians marching in the tunics of the grandfathers, rifles in their hands and fury in their hearts. The children of Kiev hold their fists to the skies, grasping the hammer sickle in their hands as it rises above the Dnieper for all the world to see. Forlorn hope. Speaking out of her foxhole, Ivana held up her stuttering hand to block the morning sun. She could almost see the bunker a mere kilometer away. The crackling gunfire could be seen in the remaining dark. A fiery strobe across the surrounding countryside. The fortification was impeccably designed. Its placement at the top of the hill with a large stretch of open countryside made it a perfect vantage point for triangulating fire and air support enough to strangle the revolution in its cradle. Ooh. That's not looking good. Uh, I'm going to go here. How about... Do that too. Nonetheless, it should have been easy. A silent night raid on a group of lazy, drunk artisan guards. For all the rumors of the Parsons as apex predators, boogeymen as scared the wealth of Kraut settlers. In reality, too many of them were nothing more than scared farmers with little training, even less supplies. It was the third charge this evening that the garrison repelled after a teenager in the band misfired his weapon on their approach. The commissar had called for volunteers for these suicide missions, throwing around the usual words about the inevitable workers' victory and the triumph of the Soviets. None of it was particularly convincing to her. It was still in diapers when the Germans invaded. Indeed, if it wasn't for her Polish mother, she likely would be the nationalists. Seeing the last remnants of the offensive scramble back to the partisan lines, Ivana couldn't help but feel a pain of guilt. 
The faces of these boys and girls, hardly much older than her baby brother, were running or in some cases limping for their lives. She knew after the commissar ran out of volunteers. I start waving that pistol around, making demands. More kids ground up in Hitler's buzz, saw for some dead ideals. If I made up her mind, when the commissar carried the next charge, she would be the first in line. No more cowardice, no more hiding, but when she charged, she wouldn't do it for the ghosts of Lenin or the rotting corpse of the Union. When Ivana fought, she'd be fighting so that one less Ukrainian had to die. Ah, oh, what a giver. Good. Get in there so you can do that there. You can circle a division there if you can if you're smart enough and fast enough. Nice. And come on. There you go, go. Cut them off. Did we oh keep it still over here, huh? Come on, because that th these guys have armor on them, don't they? Yeah, grenadier divisions. Oh, destroyed! What a beautiful thing to see. Oh god, that's not good. That's really bad. Cause for concern. Uh, significant reduction in available food stocks. If you're worried about this, please go ahead. Worrying. I've heard that one definitely before. Uh, feed the soldiers. We just have to. Production would be nice. Uh, how many guns are we out? A lot. <laughs> Fine. It's really, really bad. Really, really bad. Really, really bad. Get in there. Feel the sunflowers, huh? God, we were so close to getting this done. I think if we just hold our lines for now, I think we'll be okay. It was another sunny day of the chilly, calm wind blowing upon Ukraine's soil. Usually, this place was near a tiny village a couple of kilometers away from Donetsk, which has been left alone today, however. That was not the case. Uh, five soldiers appeared on the horizon, carrying with them uh, three bodies of comrades who had fallen in yet another war this land seen with one of them carrying a cross. The men were in a visible hurry from what old trees could understand. The enemy army was preparing for a counterattack on a liberated town nearby. They quickly dug out a big hole, carefully laid their brothers in arms, prayed for their eternal peace, dropped a few tears on the dry ground, placed a cross left, and prepared for upcoming battles. Since the moment the soldiers left, the grave was left untouched, and three friends rested under the shadows of my yoke. So a year later, when another spring came, a boy and girl were going through this place, searching for fallen sticks to play with. Maybe there were a couple under those big trees, and then they saw something weird yet beautiful, something they remembered for a long time. Near the cross, three sunflowers grew. They later laid sweets there. Yellow and blue, with a rhythm, the sound of boots stomping boom from somewhere outside the home. At first, the uh, Nosenkos were certain it was the German, German's own parade, an attempt to show strength in the face of collapse, but then, through the window, they caught glimpses of blue and yellow fluttering. Halunya threw flew from her bed to the window. They were they were there. A battalion of UNRA men marching to town above them waved the flag of Ukraine. She hadn't seen that flag since she was a child. Halunya turned from the window and rushed down the stairs, her legs swinging at a feverish pace that matched her youthful stride. As she swung it open, Halunya could at least see the men properly. A band of liberators marched along the dirt road, waving to the farmers. She wanted so badly to wave back, and yet she could not bring herself to do so. The moment was simply too grand, too powerful. No mention, no motion could mean enough. Daniel remained in his bedroom, waiting for the men to leave. If they'd all died tomorrow in a hail of German bullets, what use would this memory have? He would see those faces in his nightmares, mixing with all the other fallen he'd known and lost. Better to turn over, Daniel thought to himself, better to sleep. But even if he refused to think it to it, some part of him believed in them. Okay, you have more than enough strength to take these guys out. I need you to, for the most part, just defend your butts off. Because even though we're doing all the work here, the Republic of Ukraine is not doing enough. And they left a giant hole here. Fantastic. In. This will give us a very good defensive position here. Oh, there's someone on there. Good. Get in there. Get in there, too. Good. Give's gonna be a crappy place to take. Oh, hey, here are the Union Liberation of Kiev. Jubilation, that was the feeling Ludmilla Palachenko felt as she pants down the 
Kreschaltik into the heart of Liberty Key. It was not just that this was her home, that walking down the battered streets transported her back to happy, glittering moments of childhood. No. Was it this was the place she'd been to when the Nazis first invaded all those years ago, when they interrupted her studies at university? It was the continued screams of agony coming from the fleeing Hitlerite invaders. It was a feeling of the gun in her hand as she shot into the back of fleeing fascist invaders who would watch them fall into a slurry of snow and mud. She was on top of the Cretans. She was remembered holding her dying husband in her arms. She was watching blood trickle out of the man in front of her, and then a great whoosh, whoop of triumph shook her from her stupor. Even when the streets littered with the bodies and at last of the Hitlerites vanishing in the distance, the outcome was clear. They had won. The UA, SSR, had attained victory. Ludmilla felt a great swell of pride as the figures of two soldiers unlatched an ugly swastika and let it fall into a heap below, under the street. In this place, they mounted the red, blue, and yellow flag of the revolution. Live Ukraine, a Soviet nation, as a united country forever. Nice. Don't worry about the economy. Don't worry about it. I'm not worrying about it right now. So far we can get. Ooh, you're in planes. Glimmer of hope. Oh. If you want to buy this, please go ahead. So far we get in the better world. Olga's village had never had much, not even a name. The closest distant place was Lukiv, and so everyone simply called a few houses huddled together at its outskirts a part of it too. But there had been him, a husband, married partly out of love and partly out of necessity. His face was pockmarked and rugged, but there was strength in his arms and a determination to forge a life. Not necessarily a better one, but a life nonetheless, or so she thought. Ambition looks deeper than the heart, and sometimes it takes others to bring it out. It had been only a few months after the wedding, and Olga was with child, and he had decided, out of some foolish determination to build a better future for them, that there was room for one more soldier in Ukraine's ranks. There had been no discussion, no argument, simply tears, congratulations from the women, cheers from the men, and then silence. The house went quiet, only the anxieties in her chest and the occasional stirring of the baby kept her company. There's an old saying in the nameless village that I doubt a few generations in the past. Destiny works fast, but her absence works faster. He died almost immediately in his first action in combat, taking a bullet in the utmost heroic, saving one for his comrades. One month after the door had closed behind him, it opened again, bringing in a thin wooden casket. A lucky during these times, she was told, and a stiff-faced officer who brought his final pay. A few choked words in the funeral, and that was it. Olga's village did nothing once more. Is that it? Is this what humans are born for? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I really want to do this one. I really do. Patriotic fighting army from slaves. Their countrymen are hardly, hardly the only victim of Nazi expansionism, even here among the hills and fields. The, from seemingly every land touched by the German advance, slaves from the cross east were shipped into, into and out of Ukraine to tend the crops of Nazi breadbasket. From fellow Slavs to destitute Jews, even German expatriates, uh, all united in the cruel bindings as they are in the hatred of the fatherland. With the gaps of front lines beginning to form, there are only a few so many places our soldiers can be at once. It's where the liberation of the slaves dovetails with the revolution. Those willing among the labor force of the Third Reich will form into special divisions alongside our army, where we might fight side by side to break the shackles of the mutual oppre oppressor. But I'm feeling pretty good now. Oh, increases it by one. Autobahn. Oh, that's pretty good. A disease fit for vermin. Wartime harvesting. A handful of chips going far. Raise the stakes. Extreme times call for extreme measures. The focus of greatly buffer division attack by 25% for reducing our 20, uh, defense by 25%. Soviet supernova. Oh, God. Well, if you want something done, soon. As the months tick by and the civil war continues ramping up, many worried the conflict might drag on for years, even if the morale of the civilian population and the soldiers were infinite. It's only a matter of time before Germany recovers from their own civil war, at which point they'll begin reinforcing the holdouts of the Wehrmacht in Ukraine. The clock is ticking loudly as the fighting for the breadbasket grows nastier by the hour. Leadership of the KUP KPU has decided on a grand offensive against the German opposite our line. Hoping to wrong for the enemy and perhaps secure us with victory, the KPU government will spare no expense in either grain or ammo as the army is reinforced. Stealing for itself the onslaught to come. We must brace ourselves. This operation will either shift the momentum in our favor or result in a defeat that we may never, ever recover from. But I think I'm going to end it there. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. I will probably finish uh, the Civil War. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of... Your day.